Coming into the 2021 NFL Draft, Trevor Lawrence was seen as a surefire generational talent, leading Clemson to a 34-2 record in his time there, capping it off with a national championship. Lawrence being the number one overall pick was as close to guaranteed as you could possibly get. Trevor, well, we're about to make you the first overall pick in Jaguar football history. Congratulations to you. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback Clemson. But four years later, Trevor Lawrence isn't looking like that generational talent at all. In fact, he's just looking like any other average quarterback out there. So what exactly happened? Why is the most highly praised quarterback prospect potentially ever failing to live up to the hype? As soon as Trevor Lawrence entered high school, he was thrusted into the varsity starting quarterback role and for good reason. As just a freshman, Lawrence passed for 3,053 yards and 26 touchdowns to just seven interceptions. He also continued to get better and better, capping off his senior season with 3,290 yards and 41 touchdowns to only his one interception. Coming out of high school, Trevor Lawrence was a five-star recruit who was regarded as one of the best high school quarterback prospects of all time. He was the number one recruit in the 2018 class with a top 247 score of 101. Anything over 100 is considered exceptional has the ability to become a franchise player in the future. But I guess that's just a testament to how good Lawrence really is. As I'm sure you could guess, he had his pick of any college imaginable. And in the end, he decided to commit to the prestigious Clemson University. He arrived at Clemson in 2018 as one of the most highly touted recruits in college football history. Standing in at 6 feet 6 inches tall with a rocket arm and the poise of a seasoned veteran, Lawrence was quickly labeled the future of the program. After just four games into his freshman season, Lawrence took over that starting quarterback spot replacing former senior starter Kelly Bryant, and what followed was nothing short of spectacular. As just a true freshman, he put on a masterclass of quarterback play, throwing for over 3,200 yards and 30 touchdowns with only four interceptions, leading Clemson to an undefeated regular season. And fun fact, his first throw was a pass to wide receiver T. Higgins, who is currently a very good player on the Cincinnati Bengals when he's actually on the field. Clemson was the number two seed behind the powerhouse Alabama. With a first round win against Notre Dame, Clemson and true freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence found themselves in the college football championship. Majority of the public was betting on Alabama, led by Tua Tungavailoa, to win this game, but Lawrence put on a clinic, torching Nick Saban's defense with 347 passing yards and three touchdowns in a stunning 44-16 blowout victory as Clemson finished with a perfect record. It's a shovel pass in the middle, and battling his way to the end zone. And back pedaling, Lawrence flips it open. the middle throws it back in the end zone caught Higgins touchdown now Lawrence's performance was unexpected for a freshman on such a grand stage solidifying his status as the face of college football and setting the tone for what would become a historic college career for his sophomore season, expectations for Clemson were sky high, as you could imagine. Clemson once again dominated the regular season, and Lawrence's numbers continued to improve. He finished the year with 3,665 passing yards, 36 passing touchdowns, and only 8 interceptions. Lawrence also showed off his athleticism, rushing for a career-high 563 yards and 9 touchdowns. Clemson cruised to another undefeated regular season, winning the ACC championship and earning a spot in the college football playoff for the second straight year. Lawrence had a standout performance in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State, leading Clemson to a thrilling 29-23 win. 
In that game, Lawrence showed his dual threat abilities, rushing for a 67-yard touchdown and throwing for two more. In the national championship game, however, Lawrence and the Tigers finally met their match against Joe Burrow and the undefeated LSU Tigers. Lawrence struggled to find his rhythm in this one, completing just 18 of his 37 pass attempts for 234 yards and no touchdowns in a 42-25 loss. Despite the defeat, Lawrence's leadership and playmaking ability throughout the season had further solidified him as one of the best quarterbacks in college football. His record as a starter moved to 25-1 and and Clemson remained a powerhouse that no team wanted to face. If he could have been declared for the NFL draft, he would have undoubtedly been the number one overall pick at that point. But to be eligible for the draft, players must be out of high school for at least three years, so he was back at Clemson for what would be his final year of college football. Unfortunately, this season showed some struggles for not only college football, but the whole world. The pandemic had taken the US by storm and created uncertainty around the college football season, and Lawrence himself missed two games after testing positive for the virus. Despite the adversity, he continued to play at an elite level, throwing for 3,153 yards and 24 touchdowns in just 10 games, along with eight rushing touchdowns. Clemson playing with a lot of pace here. And uh, there you go, setting up the run for Lawrence. Lawrence, corner to the end zone, caught for a touchdown. Lawrence, looking for six. Nearly intercepted, but it's caught for a touchdown. Lawrence's leadership was on full display during this season. Not only did he lead Clemson to another ACC title, but he also became the face of college football's We Want to Play movement, advocating for the safety of players and for the season to continue amidst the pandemic. His maturity off the field was just as impressive as his play on it. And around this time, he proposed to his high school sweetheart on the Clemson field, so that was a pretty cool moment for him, I'm sure. As the college playoffs rolled around, Clemson once again found themselves matched up against Ohio State. But this time around, Lawrence and the Tigers were outmatched by a determined Buckeyes team led by Justin Fields, who was actually the second ranked high school recruit in the 2018 class behind Lawrence. The Tigers fell in this one 49 28, with Lawrence throwing for 400 yards and two touchdowns in a losing effort. It was a disappointing end to his Clemson career, but Lawrence's legacy was already more than cemented. He declared for the NFL Draft after the 2020 season, leaving Clemson with a 34-2 record as a starter, three ACC championships, and a national championship to his name. He threw for over 10,000 yards and accounted for 108 total touchdowns in his three years, and he left as one of the most accomplished and influential players not in just Clemson's history, but in all of college football history. As the NFL draft rolled around, there was no doubt about who was going to go number one. The question was, who would hold the number one pick? The Jags and the Jets were battling all season for the number one overall pick, but in the end, the 1-15 Jags ended up with that number one overall pick, while the 2-14 Jets were picking right behind them. And on April 29th, 2021, the Jaguars made it official, selecting Lawrence with the first overall pick of the draft. He was viewed as the savior who could turn around this struggling franchise. New Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer was also brought on to lead the rebuild, and Lawrence was the centerpiece of that plan. Lawrence's selection did not come without challenges. He was joining a Jaguars team in need of a complete rehaul. The franchise had experienced just one winning season in the previous 13 years, and the roster was full of holes. Expectations were certainly high, but many analysts warned that it would take time for Lawrence to find success in the NFL, given the state of the team. And it was safe to say those analysts were right. Lawrence's highly anticipated rookie season in 2021 was loaded with different challenges and disappointments both for him personally and the Jaguars as a franchise. With the excitement surrounding Lawrence, him being the first overall pick in the NFL draft, all of that set extremely large and unrealistic expectations to live up to, given the state of the team. But the thing is, Lawrence didn't get anywhere near living up to the hype. 
From the start, the Jaguars faced significant hurdles, starting with head coach Urban Meyer's controversial leadership. Meyer, who was stepping into the NFL after being a successful college coach, struggled to adapt to the professional game. Urban Meyer is, outside of Nick Saban, to me, the best college football coach ever. He's a not a good, he's a great college football coach. Oftentimes, what makes you great at one job can be your undoing in another. His unorthodox methods, combined with his lack of experience at the NFL level, led to a very confusing and unorganized atmosphere within the organization. Meyer's coaching style alienated some players and even created friction within the locker room, which contributed to a lack of team chemistry and, of course, focus on the field. As for Laurent, the struggles began early on. While he showed flashes of his potential, he also faced growing pains that were made even worse by the coaching instability. The Jaguars' offensive line struggled to protect him, leading to a significant number of sacks and forced throws that contributed to his high interception count. I mean, he's double teamed on every play, and down goes Trevor Lawrence as Nick Bosa. There's the snap, time in the pocket, and he is going to lose the ball as he sacked on his first play. He finished the first season of his career with 3,641 passing yards, but only managed 12 touchdowns to his 17 interceptions, which is a disappointing stat line for any player, especially one that was so good in college and high school. The inconsistency in play calling and the lack of offensive strategy under Meyer further hurt Lawrence's ability to find rhythm in the passing game, and as the season wore on, Jaguars' frustrations got even worse. The team endured a 20-game losing streak dating back to last season, five of which Lawrence was accountable for. Lawrence felt the weight of the franchise's struggles on his shoulders. Instead of being the transformative figure expected to elevate the Jaguars, he found himself stuck in a losing environment that stunted his growth. Games that should have been developmental opportunities often turned into disheartening experiences as Lawrence tried to navigate the complexities of the NFL while contending with a coach whose vision for the team was increasingly being questioned. Urban Meyer's time was marked by controversies that distracted the team overall. Incidents such as his failure to return to the team after a loss to the Cincinnati Bengals and the fallout from his interactions with players and staff created a toxic atmosphere. This lack of stability and accountability ultimately hindered Lawrence's development as a rookie quarterback. These struggles led to a mounting criticism of both Meyer and the organization. Lawrence's potential as a franchise quarterback was overshadowed by the overarching narrative of a coach who didn't seem to be prepared for the challenges of the NFL, marking the end of an era that many felt never truly even began. For Lawrence, his rookie year was disappointing as he knew he could perform at a higher level with the right support and structure around him. Because of this, Trevor Lawrence and Jaguar fans entered the 2022 season with new hope. They had just hired Doug Peterson, who was a Super Bowl winning coach with the Eagles, to replace Urban Meyer. And that shift in leadership brought a sense of stability and structure to the organization, finally. Peterson's experience and knowledge in the NFL were expected to help Lawrence develop into that franchise quarterback that the Jaguars envisioned when they selected him first overall in that 2021 draft. Now this season started off rather poorly though as the Jags dropped to just 2-6. and six. But as the season progressed, Lawrence demonstrated significant improvement in his play every single game. The coaching staff focused on building a scheme that emphasized short to intermediate passing, allowing Lawrence to utilize his quick release and accuracy while also developing a rhythm with his receiving core. He showcased increased confidence in the pocket, improved decision making, and was getting better at reading the defenses. Lawrence finished the 2022 season with 4,113 passing yards, 25 touchdowns, and only 8 interceptions, which was much better than his rookie year. A main highlight from his sophomore season came in Week 15 against Dallas. This was a must-win game to keep the Jags' playoff hopes alive, and Lawrence did everything he could to make that happen. He threw for 318 yards and four touchdowns while leading Jacksonville back from a 17-point deficit at one point in this game. They escaped with a six-point win in overtime, 40-34. to Lawrence looks, taps the ball over the middle, it's caught for the touchdown! Pressure coming, rolls away, steps in, has a man! Lawrence lofting in, so caught for 
the touchdown! Lawrence pumps, throws, caught for the touchdown! Another defining moment for Lawrence came in the regular season finale against the Titans, where he threw for 212 yards, securing a playoff spot for the Jags in a thrilling 20-16 win. He developed strong relationships with his teammates, particularly the newly acquired wide receiver Christian Kirk and tight end Evan Ingram. This chemistry paid huge dividends as Lawrence connected with both players frequently throughout the season, helping to create a more dynamic offense. As the regular season drew to a close, the Jaguars had transformed from a struggling team to being an AFC South contender, ultimately finishing the season with a 9-8 record. Lawrence's growth was evident, and he emerged as a promising young quarterback with a bright future ahead. The best moment of his sophomore season came in the playoffs where he faced off against the Chargers once again in the wildcard round. In a thrilling matchup, Lawrence put together a remarkable performance, throwing for 288 yards and four touchdowns, leading the Jags to a historic 31-30 comeback victory. The game started off pretty rough as the Jags found themselves down 27-0 due to four Trevor Lawrence interceptions in the first half. And it's paid off. Off the fake, that's knocked away, it's deflected, and it's intercepted. Here comes extra pressure, but the pass is intercepted. Lawrence throws, and again, it's intercepted. Third and ten. In the pocket. Fires, and that is going to be picked again. But they weren't ready to give up that easy, as Lawrence followed this up with four touchdown passes, as well as a diving two-point conversion to cut the lead to 30-28. to In the pocket. Fires, and that'll be caught for the touchdown. Lawrence looking under pressure, throws wide open, making the catch. Two, and Lawrence reaches over and scores. And with a little over three minutes left on the clock, the Jags march down the field for the game-winning drive, ending in a field goal to win as the time expired. Here we go for the win. This win not only marked the Jaguars' first playoff victory since 2017, but also established Lawrence as a player capable of leading his team in high-stakes situations. Their next opponent in the playoffs was a very tough Kansas City Chiefs team who were, of course, led by Patrick Mahomes. Now, this game was a nail-biter. Mahomes injured his ankle late in the first quarter and missed the rest of the first half, but the Jaguars just couldn't take advantage of this. It was 10-7 when Mahomes left the game after a field goal drive, but on the Chiefs' next possession, the Jaguars gave up a 98-yard touchdown drive to backup quarterback Chad Henney. Aided by a roughing the passer call against defensive lineman Arden Key and giving up a 39-yard run to Isaiah Pacheco. The Jaguars clawed their way back within three points early in the fourth quarter with a four-yard touchdown run by Travis Etienne, set up by Trevor Lawrence's 37-yard strike to Zay Jones, and an 18-yard reverse play by Christian Kirk. But the Chiefs' lead was back up to 10 after Mahomes, on his bum ankle, engineered a 10-play, 75-yard touchdown drive to put Kansas City back up 27-17 midway through the final period. I guess this is just one of the reasons why many people are calling this guy the goat huh that's up for debate though then the jaguars collapsed and had consecutive turnovers receiver jamal agnew fumbled at the three yard line and then lawrence was picked off by cornerback jalen watson in the end the jaguars took a tough 27 to 20 loss but a playoff appearance and a playoff win in just his second year in the nfl was not something to be upset about at all coming into the 2023 season jaguar fans had hope once again. They were building a pretty good team around Lawrence with players such as Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, Evan Ingram, and then adding Calvin Ridley in the offseason. They were looking like they had the potential to be possible Super Bowl contenders. And for the beginning of the year, the Jags looked dominant. They got off to an impressive 8-3 and three start, but then they collapsed. A team that was supposed to be Super Bowl contenders went just 1-5 in, in their last six games, missing out on the playoffs. Lawrence didn't hit that breakout stride that he was expected to. Sure, he had a pretty good year throwing for 4,016 yards with a completion percentage of 65.6%, achieving 21 touchdowns while throwing 14 interceptions. But he just didn't develop into the generational status that many fans were hoping for and expecting. 
But beside all that, the Jaguars still saw him as their starting quarterback of the future, and they gave him a massive five-year, $275 million contract extension heading into the 2024 season. The season that he was finally going to break out and prove that he's a generational talent, right? Well, not quite. At the time of recording this, we are seven weeks into the NFL season and the Jags look downright awful. They're sitting at two and five, which is one of the worst records in the NFL, not to mention how they started off the season zero and four. Trevor Lawrence has looked like a low tier starting quarterback at best. And if you have him in fantasy football, forget about it. I'm sure you are not happy with his performances. I just have no idea what's going on with this team. Most of their core consists of young guys, and they really didn't lose a ton of their key pieces. They also went out and drafted star wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU with the 23rd overall pick, who is panning out very nicely, I must say, and signed wide receiver Gabe Davis. Both moves were supposed to help out this receiving core. Sure, they ended up losing out on Calvin Ridley in the offseason, but he wasn't performing at the level he was expected to last season either. This team was expected to be Super Bowl contenders or at least a playoff team, but so far they are looking downright awful. Sure, they've had some difficult games against the Dolphins, Bills, and Texans, but then they lose to the Browns, who are arguably the worst team in football. Cleveland is sitting at just 1-6 with their only win being against the Jags, which is pretty embarrassing. And their two wins haven't really proven too much to me. They beat a mediocre Colts team who was missing their best player in Jonathan Taylor, then beat a Patriots team in London led by Drake May in his first career start. Two weeks back, they got dismantled by a Caleb Williams-led Bears team who still has a ton to learn, but they are looking much better than the Jags at this point. There were a lot of drops by Jags players in this one, but still, Trevor Lawrence is going to have to play a lot better if they want to win these games. I'm not personally ready to give up on Trevor Lawrence just yet. I still think he has the potential to lead the Jags to a deep playoff run in the future. Like I said, not this year though. I think they're going to miss the playoffs personally. But something that people have to realize is that Lawrence just turned 25 years old a few days before posting this video. He still has a ton of time to grow. We've recently seen a lot of quarterbacks break out late, such as Geno Smith, who had an awful early career with the Jets before being backups on the Giants and Chargers, and then finally the Seahawks before getting to start there. And he's looking, you know, pretty good right now. Or Baker Mayfield, who had one good year in Cleveland before struggling and then rotting away in Carolina before having a crazy comeback and redeeming his career in Tampa Bay. And now we see Sam Darnold, who was stuck on the Jets and the Panthers, both places that seem to be themes for struggling quarterbacks, before going to the 49ers, being a backup there, and then to the Vikings this offseason where he actually got to start. He's looking incredible so far, with the Vikings being one of the best teams at a shocking 5-2. and two. So before you decide to freak out about Trevor Lawrence, just remember, he is still young, has a lot of time to grow and develop. He's also shown plenty of flashes of greatness, and I also believe that he is a guy you should be building your organization around. This Jags team is still very young with some age and some more star power. I think they could be a serious threat in a couple of years, but I want to know what you guys think. Is Trevor Lawrence just a mediocre quarterback or does he still have some untapped generational potential? And could you see him leading the Jags to a Super Bowl in the future? Let me know in the comment section down below. And also, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing so I know to make more like this. 